Welcome once again. In this video, we're going to be talking about Janace and Jambres, who they are. And we're going to be reading from Paul's letter to Timothy, the second letter to Timothy, chapter 3. And we're going to tackle the question, how did Paul know their names? So here we are in 2 Timothy chapter 3. In order to get the full context of this, we're going to have to start at verse 1. But know this, that in the last days, grievous times will come. For men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, fierce, not lovers of good, traitors, headstrong, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding a form of godliness, but having denied its power. Turn away from these also, for some of these are people who creep into houses and take captive gullible women loaded down with sins led away by various lusts, always learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Even as Janus and Jambres opposed Moses, so these also oppose the truth. Men corrupted in mind, who concerning the faith are rejected, but they will proceed no further, for their folly will be evident to all men, as theirs also came to be. So a quick review here. Paul says that in the last days, grievous times will come, and he lists a whole lot of different characteristics of the kind of people that will be inhabiting the earth in the last days. And then he goes on to say these kind of people are the same kind of people or the same spirit as Jannes and Jambres. Because he says here, even as Jannes and Jambres opposed Moses, so these also oppose the truth. So who are Jannes and Jambres? Well, ancient texts tell us that Jannes and Jambres are the names of the two magicians that Pharaoh called to oppose Moses. Now, there are a lot of different ancient texts that actually names these magicians as Jannes and Jambres. But what I want to focus in on here is the teachings, the books, the literature that circulated in Paul's day because we want to know where Paul got this information from. How did Paul know about Jannes and Jambres? Now, I want to talk about four possible sources here. Number one is a piece of literature that is said to have been in existence in Paul's day, and that is the Sefer Hayashar, or otherwise known as the Book of Jasher. Number two is the Babylonian Talmud. Number three is Targum Jonathan. And number four, word of mouth. Let's look at the first possibility, the Sefer Hayashar. Sefer Hayashar is a Jewish work which is also known as the Book of Jasher. The story goes that a Roman soldier named Sidrus found the book in the ruins of Jerusalem at about 70 AD. It was then taken to his home in Spain and from there made its rounds until it eventually was printed. Now, a lot of people believe that this is, in fact, the book that is spoken of and referenced in the book of Joshua and the book of 2 Samuel. In chapter 79 of the book of Jasher, we have the story of Moses coming before Pharaoh to ask Pharaoh to let his people go. The first sign that Moses and Aaron showed Pharaoh was the sign of the branch or a rod that turned into a serpent. We can read this account in chapter 79 of the book of Jasher. Let's start at verse 25. And Pharaoh said to Moses, What do you require? And they answered him, saying, The Lord God of the Hebrews has sent us to thee to say, Send forth my people, that they may serve me. And when Pharaoh heard their words, 
he was greatly terrified before them. And he said to them, Go today and come back to me tomorrow. And they did according to the word of the king. And when they had gone, Pharaoh sent for Balaam the magician, and to Janes and Jambres his sons. You see, there we have it. The names Janes and Jambres right here in this document that is said to have been found in this first century around the time of Paul. And to all the magicians and conjurers and counselors which belonged to the king, and they came and sat before the king. And the story goes on when Aaron threw down his rod and it became a serpent. And so did Janice and Jambres. They also threw down a rod and it became a serpent. And so this hardened Pharaoh's heart. Janice and Jambres opposed Moses here in Sefer Hayashar. It is significant to note that Sefer Hayashar, or the book of Jasher, is considered to be a Jewish midrash. Now, a midrash is a Jewish literary work that offers a commentary or interpretation of scripture. Now, the fact that Sefer Hayashar is a Jewish midrash, this is important to understand. Because Paul said in Acts chapter 22 verse 3 that he was taught he was learned by Gamaliel, okay? He sat at the feet of Gamaliel, as he says. So he was a student of Gamaliel. Gamaliel was one of the greatest Jewish rulers in all of history. He was a leader in Torah and in the oral law. So Paul would have known about all of the Jewish commentaries in his day. And that point leads me to number two, which is the Babylonian Talmud, Manakoth chapter 85a. Now this Jewish literary work was written after the time of Paul. But let's not forget that the Babylonian Talmud is written to preserve the oral law that was in circulation in Paul's day. So the Babylonian Talmud, Manakoth chapter 85 a names Jannes and Jambres, but it doesn't name them specifically as Jannes and Jambres, but rather as Johanna and Mamre. Very, very similar variations of the names Jannes and Jambres. Also note that Jannes or Johanna is a Hebrew name for John, okay? It's a Hebrew, it's a Jewish name. Now, if the book of Jasher is accurate, then Jannes and Jambres would have been of Jewish lineage. Somehow they went off the wrong path somewhere and they ended up to be magicians, which is strictly forbidden in the law of God. Number three, the Targum Jonathan. The Targum Jonathan is a literary work written by Jonathan ben Uziel, which was a student of Hillel the Elder. So you might say, well, what is Jonathan ben Uziel, the student of Hillel, the elder, how does that tie into Paul here and, you know, Paul's letter to Timothy? Now, Hillel had a son by the name of Simon, and Simon had a son by the name of Gamaliel, which is the mentor of Paul the apostle. So we've got Jonathan ben Uziel, student of Hillel the elder, and Hillel's grandson, was Gamaliel, which was the teacher, the mentor, the rabbi of Paul. So everything that Hillel taught, Jonathan would know, and he would write it in Targum Jonathan, but also Paul would know because Paul grew up, basically spiritually speaking, at the feet of Gamaliel, the grandson of Hillel. So let's see what Jonathan wrote. This is Targum Jonathan, his commentary of Exodus chapter 7. It says, And Moshe, which is the Hebrew name for Moses, and Aharon, which is the Hebrew name for Aaron, went in unto Pharaoh, and did as the Lord had commanded. And Aharon threw down the rod before the sight of Pharaoh, and before the sight of his servants, and it became a basilisk. Now, this is very, very intriguing because a basilisk in European legend is the most evil or the most powerful of all the serpents, the king of the serpents. 
The legend goes that the basilisk was so, so poisonous, so venomous that it, the venom would, would be just oozing out of it everywhere. And the, just the glance of this king of the serpents could cause death. Now, I know that sounds extreme, but that is the legend. So here in the Targum Jonathan, and most likely taught by Hillel and known by Kamaliel, is the teaching that the rod of Moses and Aaron became the king of the serpents, became a very, very dangerous snake. But Pharaoh called the Hechems, I'm not sure what that name means, and magicians. And they also, Janice and Jambres, there are the names right there. Magicians of Mitzrayim, another name for Egypt, magicians of Egypt, did the same by their burnings of divination. They threw down each man his rod and they became basilisks, but were forthwith changed to be what they were at first. And the rod of Aaron swallowed up their rods, and the disposition of Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he would not hearken to them as the Lord had said. Very, very interesting and very important to understand that Jonathan here, the student of Hillel, wrote about Janis and Jambres. We would be safe to say that he learned this from Hillel because, after all, he was a student of Hillel. And Gamaliel would have known about this as well, would have known the names of Janice and Jambres because he was the grandson of Hillel. And Paul most likely knew about the names of Janice and Jambres through Gamaliel or through the texts that were in circulation at his time. Now, I also ran across several articles that said that early church father, Origen, wrote about Janice and Jambres and said that, Paul likely knew about Janice and Jambres by a book, by the name of the book of Janice and Jambres that apparently circulated in that day. Now, I looked all over the place to confirm that Origen did, in fact, say this. That is, that Paul knew about Janice and Jambres through a book by the name of the book of Janice and Jambres. Now, I ran across one of the writings of Origen that names Janice and Jambres, but Origen didn't say that Paul got his knowledge from the book of Janice and Jambres. Now, it could be out there. I don't know. I have not seen it. If any of you know of a link to the work where Origen specifically says, I'm not talking about where Origen names Janice and Jambres. I know about that. But I'm looking for what everybody says that exists, that Origen wrote about Paul saying that Paul knew about Janice and Jambres because of a book, the book of Janice and Jambres. If any of you know about that, if you can forward a link to me, I would greatly appreciate it. But I'm not going to go ahead and actually reference that here because I have not confirmed that. And finally, I know that some people out there would say, well, Paul knew about Janice and Jambres because God showed him. God told him. You know, he wrote the word of God down there. Well, Paul didn't say that the Lord showed him. Paul didn't say that the Lord told him, okay? Couple that with the fact that there was teaching in Paul's day about Jannies and Jambres. I think that the idea or the theory that Paul got this information directly from God without hearing it through say for Hayashar or through Gamaliel, through the oral law in one way or another, I think that that is the least likely theory. To summarize, earlier I mentioned four possible sources of Paul's knowledge of the names of Janice and Jambres. There was the Sefer HaYashar, the Babylonian Talmud, the Targum Jonathan, and directly from Gamaliel himself. I believe the truth is probably all the above. He probably read about it. He probably heard about it through Gamaliel. And in his discourse, in his letter to Timothy, he just wrote it, knowing that it was common knowledge in that day for people to know the names Jannies and Jambres. Until next time, as always, seek God with all your heart. And if you seek him with all your heart, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.